be recording. So as everyone heard, we are recording for posting mm -hmm. on the Becky website. Yes. Uh, please everyone, yes. unless you are our featured speaker or someone who will be discussing with her, please mute your microphones. Thanks. Welcome everyone. Um, I'm very excited about tonight's schmooze with Suzanne Neusner. Is that the right way to say it, Suzanne Neusner? Yes. And, and we've all been fortunate to be able to see her quilts, or I think most of us have been in the building to see her quilts that have been up at Becky and they're lovely. And we're gonna to get to hear more about how the, her process and what they're about. And I'd like to introduce you, Suzanne. Now, Suzanne has a fabulous biography on our website and I'm not going to read the whole thing. I'm gonna do a few things that I think will be helpful for this evening. Um, but I, I urge everybody to check out Becky.org um, the, through the, is it through the gift shop, um, Cynthia, or, or is it just Beck? Under it's under art gallery, which art gallery. is oddly under community. That's perfect. <laughs> so for 35 years, Suzanne has been, has focused on abstract imagery through a variety of weaving and quilting techniques that she developed to reflect her own aesthetic. Her work includes references to landscapes, abstractions, and playful reinventions of traditional Jewish themes, such as matzah covers. And then I'm going to read Suzanne's words, um, how she describes her work. Fiber, the medium I have chosen for my work, incorporates all of my past experimentation in art, painting, printmaking, and stained glass. Whether in tapestries or in quilts, the surface design recycles the previous techniques. New directions emerge from prior pieces. Observing natural forms, whether through my studio window or in a photograph, I transform what I see into a fiber motif. The step re that step requires a great effort for I do not want to repeat myself or imitate anybody else. An additional challenge is choosing colors and manipulating fabric. Creating a work of art with lasting visual impact is what propels me to work. I just think that's a beautiful statement. Thank you for sharing that with us. And the format tonight is that um, Helen and Diane are going to ask questions. Do you, Suzanne, do you feel comfortable with people? If people have questions as we go along, do you want us to interrupt and ask those questions or would you rather have those come at the end? Um, no, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> it will so keep me have, alert. <laughs> it's a small enough group. So if you have a question, um, either put the hand up signal or put something in the chat and we'll try to stay on top of that. Um, Helen? Okay. okay. Well, start? It, yeah, I didn't know I'm, we were going to show I'm something. I'm going to start by oh, showing. Okay. Oh, right. Um, okay. Here we go. So is everybody seeing this? Yes. Um, so I have put together a show that lead, a slideshow that leads us a little bit, reminds us what it looks like inside Becky, if you haven't been there for a while. Um, and then I have the individual pieces and we can come back to these during the question period very easily. Um, it's very easy to come back and forth. Uh, but I think that in these individual slides, you can really get a sense of uh, the intricacy of the work, the kind of playfulness and huge amount of work that has gone into these and some of the research that's gone into them as well. Um, and so if you were at Becky, you would see those in the outer wall and then you would come down the hall mm -hmm. and see this lovely huge coaster <laughs> <laughs> and busy garden, which is just um, filled with color, really color and pattern and natural form and geometry. Um, mm. and, and then we get to some of the actual, so this is outside the box, pieces that are actually physically outside the box. A um, few slightly smaller pieces and show them to you quickly. They have overstitching on them. Um, I'm not sure of the technical. I mean, Diane knows some of the technical things. I don't, I just know how the differences in pattern and texture and surface. Well, maybe that's why it's called beneath the surface. Mm -hmm. not uh, 
um, balloon festival. Um, and then we go to the other wall, a view from above. This is physically 3D. I don't know if everybody caught that mm -hmm. in the slide, the overview slide, as is this Book of Life. Um, you, it, it actually, when I was preparing this slide, it took some work to get the shadows <laughs> so that people could get the idea that it's actually 3D. And then Genesis. Um, and as we move down the hallway, there's sails, which we used on our poster, but it's actually quite a small piece on the poster. It looks bigger. This is also a 3D piece. Mm -hmm. And sell. And then the big wall. So to the right is kaleidoscope, a small piece. And then the hoopa, which I turned a little so we could see more of it in the slide. And I also made a detail. The detail's a little bit blurry, but it helps you see how intricate it is. And now we move into the, the work before the quilt work. So a little bit of context. <clears throat> Suzanne, do you have any idea of the year that you did this? Um, Probably, um, maybe in would be indicated. Bottom. It's in the bottom, but I couldn't um, see. I don't have. Um, yeah, no, I neither can I. But probably in the um, late seventies or early eighties. Okay, great. Right. And here's another wood block. Oh yes, that was the first linoleum block that I did oh, when block. I oh, when I when I returned to art because I had you know I I had a I had to raise children and um, but once they um, you know got into school I was able to to start my artwork again. How many children? I have four children. Yeah, full house. Okay. Um, a tapestry. Uh, yes. That's amazing. Oh, that, that was, um, well, I've worked in tapestry for about 10 years. Um, and, um, one of the reasons why I switched from linoleum prints to tapestry was that, I um, I think I got tired of working in black and white, although I did use some colors in linoleum printing, but it was, I just felt that I, I couldn't expand any further. And um, there was a course that was offered at the Rhode Island School of Design. I was living in Providence then, and I took it and I didn't expect to be hooked by the medium, but um, I had a very fine teacher and um, um, I just, um, you know, I worked. It's <laughs> great. It's very cool. And stained glass. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, the stained glass period actually came after the linoleum prints. That's right, I, because I wanted to use color. Um, but um, you know, I did a number of pieces. But I, when I look back and reflect upon it, there were maybe three or four pieces that were of, um, of interest. But otherwise, I, I was not really that competent. Okay. And another tapestry, probably oh, out yes. of order here, but okay. Oh yeah, that one. Um, that one is fairly complex. Yes. Mm. Yeah, it looks at the interplay of the yeah. um, figure, the figurative element, and the geometric. Form. Yes. Yeah. Right. Um, this is the matzo cover that's on exhibit, actually. So we're back to what we have at Becky, and. Uh, yeah. This is a smattering of what is available. Apparently, Helen snatched up the matzo cover that's on <laughs> the far right. So no longer available. Um, but there are also holla covers. So um, should you be inspired by your post 
Passover blues by not having the cover, <laughs> <laughs> or you want to get a hollow cover for the coming year. This is the little advertisement. So um, I am going to leave this up like this so that we can make reference to specific works, which are um, hopefully you can see the thumbnails here um, and just point me to something if it comes up. I don't want to move too fast to make everybody nauseous um, <laughs> if it comes up during discussion. I want to interject here, Cynthia, and just mm -hmm. say thank you so much for the photographs and the way you've presented them. You, I know it, it took you a lot of time and the end product is, is really quite beautiful and it's great for us to have this record of the work and, um, and to be able to reference it during the talk. So thank you very much. Yeah, oh. thank you. And um, Suzanne, I will send it to you or if you give me the names of your kids, they can have it too because it's really nice to have a record of your work. So questions. Okay, so can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, all right. Um, so I'm gonna ask uh, three or four questions and then Diane uh, will ask three or four more questions. Um, so regarding your design process, do you create a blueprint for your designs prior to beginning work or do you have a general idea and then there's room for improvisation once you get started? Well, that's a very good question. Um, so usually I make drawings and um, uh, sometimes, you know, I'll see the potential of developing the drawing into a quilt. Um, now, when I had to make commissions for people, um, I did a number of wedding um, canopies I had to make a drawing for the for my clients <laughs> because um, I mean it was just it was necessary, um, but most of the time I improvise. Yeah. I mean sometimes I'll see a couple fabrics that look interesting or some shapes, and I'll just put them together and develop them. Um, sometimes I actually have to throw them out because they don't work but um it's uh, i'm i'm very pleased that i can improvise because it the one never knows what will emerge but usually something very positive because if if it were not the case i would not be doing my work and have you ever gone back and, and ripped something out and said that doesn't i'm work. sorry have you ever gone back and ripped something out and- Oh, oh, research, you know? <laughs> occasionally, yes. Um, um, but but most, most of the time I, I feel that there's never a mistake in art. You just do it and complete it and then go on and do another piece. Okay, are there any uh, processes over all these years you've been doing this that you've invented yourself that you employ? I mean, some of the, like the, the one with the leaves where you, you you have the different, you know, different shapes and- Oh, okay. Are there um, well, um, that you developed that you uh, shared with there others? Was a, there was a point where I lived in Florida and I had a very fine teacher who taught me a lot of sewing techniques, which I needed to learn. Yeah. Um, and I do use a lot of app machine applique. That is, I will take a shape, which is usually irregular, um, and I know how to adhere it to material. And, and the one, that, for example, the one that we're looking at, the Valley of the Leaves, um, incorporates that technique. Mm -hmm. um, so I do a lot of piecing, but a lot of applique. And um, I mean, construction is very interesting. And I've been <clears throat> exploring, you know, a lot of 3D approaches um, because I don't want to, I don't want my work to look like anyone else's work. 
And do you pretty much keep these techniques to yourself or, you know, in, in the group discussions that you have or get togethers, do you ever share your secrets? Do I ever share my, my techniques? Yeah. Um, yeah, if anyone, um, um, okay, it has happened a couple of times where uh, someone wanted to know how to do something and I, I'm, I'm very happy to teach yeah. them the, the, the sewing if they want to learn. Is, uh, is, is there a pretty broad quilting community? Are there are a lot of groups out there. Well, there there is a, for example, a quilting community where I live. But the um, what what the people do are are you know bed coverings, which I do yeah. admire. But it's not what I want to do. I I like to do wall quilts. Yeah. Um, Diane, do you want to step in? Okay. Now, I must say, I am in awe of your work. I do quilting, but cannot pretend to be at the level you're at. I, I work on the, the bed coverings. Um, <laughs> oh, you do? We have, <laughs> yes. We've received so many positive comments from people who have viewed your exhibit. I just wanted to let you know, because it's, it's very different and uh, people don't think of quilts in this uh, venue, this type of, uh, you know, on the wall. People think of the bed quilts. So this was very enlightening for a lot of people. Um, I, I did have a question. Are you self-taught in the quilting or did you, when did you start in with your quilting? Oh, interesting. Um, um, I, I took a course, you know, it was just, um, one of those, um, like evening courses. Um, um, and you know, I had to, I, I really, my, my sewing was really weak, but I, I learned how to, um, piece together, you know, squares triangles, circles. And once mm -hmm. I got started, I, I decided, oh my goodness, there's a lot that I could do. <laughs> so, um, you know, first, and, and, and also at the very beginning, I did everything by hand, mm -hmm. um, even hand quilting, um, which I don't think I could, I could do now. <laughs> um, so um, then I, you know, I worked and then when I, <clears throat> was living in Florida, I, I, I had spoken about this. Um, I, I had private lessons with this woman who, um, who taught me an enormous amount. Um, and then I took some workshops here and there, um, dyeing, um, oh, I'm trying to think what else, um, oh, construction. And, and those, um, those um, classes that I took, you know, enhanced my technique. So they were invaluable um, because there's always something that I can learn. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, how long have you been quilting? Oh, um, let's see, um, about 25 years. Do you feel that your block printing helped you um, advance into the quilting? Oh, yes, yes. I mean, every one thing leads to another. It's like when you, you're you a cook, you're learning how to cook, you know, you so you know how to make, um, we'll say, omelets. But then after you mas master making omelets, you can do other things as well. So um, the more you do, the better you become. Oh, absolutely. Um, have you been influenced by other quilters or particularly group of quilters? And I'm thinking of the Appalachian quilters in, in particular, oh. but you know, have you been influenced by any of them? Not that particular group, but any particular groups? Well, um, I enjoy seeing the work of other quilters. And I think that the quilting community um, is, is a very exciting one in terms of what they are producing. Um, I belong to um, a quilting organization um, and um, we, uh, <clears throat> We receive an email every week announcing shows, um, offering jury um, uh, shows as well. And they also produce a magazine. So um, that keeps me tuned in to the, to the quilting community. Mm -hmm. And um, do you 
share quilting ideas with other quilters or you just work on your own? I work basically on my own. Um, I'm very pleased that my family has been very supportive of what I'm doing. And um, they, they help me sometimes with titles. <laughs> and um, so um, I don't know what else to say, but um, um, you know, most of the time, basically, you know, when you're an artist, you work um, by yourself. It's, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's in a way a lonely um, experience, but um, it's very important to show your work and share it with other people. Um, and I enjoy seeing and hearing, hearing the reaction of people to what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes they see things that I don't see. So that's yeah. very exciting. Yeah, my brother-in-law is also a quilter. He has some of his work on permanent display at Temple Vassar in Poughkeepsie. And uh, he does some really lovely work also. Oh, does he do wall quilts? Yes. Oh. Louis, Louis Crevelin, yeah. So um, he got inspired by me because he, he got to the point where he couldn't get around as much and he decided quilting was something he could do in one place. So That's he right. really, he really um, created some beautiful things. He was a, a ceramic artist by profession, but again, you know, he used that to transition into the quilting. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I don't know if any other people, I think someone in the chat had a Mar question. Margie, yeah. Your, yeah, Margie yeah. has a question. Yeah, did any of your, your children take up this quilting? Oh, interesting. Um, well, my, my <laughs> not my sons, but my daughter actually is a motion artist. Mm -hmm. um, she works for the, um, the, um, the arts and um, entertainment um, channel. Um, but she, um, she t definitely told me that seeing me work, even as a child, inspired her. Mm. And um, I remember when she told me she wanted to become an artist, I was, of course, a little concerned, you know, how will she support herself? But she, um, she learned <clears throat> the technology, which is really a lot. And, um, you know, she's quite happy with her work. But I, I, when I do work, I usually show it to her during the process. And I like her, I appreciate her feedback. Mm -hmm. We have another question, um, Donna Levine asking, do you lay out all the pieces to form the design prior to beginning to sew? Oh, uh, no. Um, mm -hmm. very rarely. Usually I, I will begin by uh, maybe assembling two or three pieces, um, uh, the basic structure, um, but, um, and I pin things on, on the, the pieces, the fabric on a, um, uh, a foam board mm -hmm. so that I can see it well. And sometimes I actually take photos of it during the process because when I look at the photo, I see it in a with, um, in a very fresh way. Mm -hmm. So um, no, no, no. It's it's interesting that it's it's not quite like assembling a puzzle. <laughs> uh, we have another question. Well, Helene wanted to know where you live. Oh, I live in. Um, I live in Rhinebeck, New York, which is in the Hudson Valley. It's slightly north of Poughkeepsie and south of Albany. And then another question, how do you care for these pieces after they've been hanging? Well, um, after I'm done with a piece, I, I wash it mm -hmm. because um, you know, I've been touching it and, it's been, right. and it really, um, and then um, uh, I, um, store it in, in a, uh, sometimes I store it by rolling it up and putting it into a cloth bag. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I also um, use a, um, a plastic storage bin, a very large one, and roll them up. Um, so that's how I deal with it. Mm -hmm. What about the, once it's been hanging, can you take it if it gets dusty I'm or sorry? whatnot? 
after it's been hanging for a while, um, if it gets dusty or it starts to, you know, the colors start to fade a little bit, can you take it down and wash oh, it? Oh, oh, well, one thing, one sh if one has a, um, one should never hang a quilt um, in direct sunlight. Right. Mm -hmm. If it hangs um, on a wall, um, you know, it, without direct sunlight, it, it will not fade. But of course, there are some fabrics that fade more than others. Um, uh, we have another question um, from Jennifer Klein. Do you see yourself as a Jewish artist doing Judaism inspired or influenced work? Um, that, yeah. Not exactly, but I'm, I'm, I really do enjoy the challenge of making Jewish ritual objects. Um, that is very meaningful. I mean, I even made walls for our sukkah at home out of mm. nylon fabric. Wow. Um, and of course, I, I really did enjoy the commissions um, that I had for um, um But now I, <clears throat> I'm just doing our, um, you know, I, I, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> no one's telling me what to do. I, I, I tell myself, this is what I'm going to do. Yeah. Yeah, so I'd like to see, um, I one time did a, a Torah scroll covering um, and I, I could see how um, fiber art could enhance the, the Jewish experience. Um, I actually have a question. I'm going to jump in. Um, <clears throat> I have a question about keyboard fantasy because mm. it's so different from the others. Do you want to tell us about? This oh, is... interesting. Well, that's true because you you can tell that it's a um, um, there are objects that are accessible and um, it's very clear that it's a musical theme. Right. And I don't remember. When I, when I um, whether I had that, um, I, I, I must have started out with some musical shapes and then I guess decided to um, uh, turn it into, um, into that theme. Um, uh, now, occasionally I do pieces which, where, where the theme is really obvious. Um, but you, you're right though, it, it is slightly different from the others. Mm -hmm. But of course I have a whole collection of quilts and um, uh, it, it would be impossible to show them all. Um, there, are, or there are many that have, have definite themes. Okay, I'm going to jump in too. Um, are there fabrics that you prefer to work with? And, and what's the extent of, uh, you know, have you experimented with different types of fabrics? Oh, yeah. Well, generally, I, I like um, cotton. Um, but occasionally, I, I get various scraps. Um, um, I, I also love silk. Um, I had a friend who was an interior decorator and she had all these leftover samples and she gave them to me and they really did enhance my, um, my work. Um, I, I will basically, I'm, I will use nearly anything so <laughs> long as it doesn't stretch too much. Mm -hmm. I mean, a Jersey fabric would not do, <clears throat> um, but, um, um, sometimes um, a, a tablecloth wears out. Um, it, it eventually lands in my in one of my quilts. So that leads to what I was going to ask: is how do you source your fabrics? Do you? I mean, it sounds like some people give you things. Sometimes you repurpose things. Do you go on, you know, hunts for the bet? For the fabric for a particular piece, or what's your process for that? Oh yeah, whatever. Um, Everything you said is true. Um, um, 
I, I sometimes, you know, take um, clothing mm -hmm. and uh, that has worn out. Um, and um, I, so long as it's in go good condition, I use it. Um, occasionally I actually go into um, Joanne Fabric store mm -hmm. and, and okay. buy things. I don't feel guilty about it. <laughs> um, um, and of course, occasionally there are people who will say, oh, Suzanne, I have, um, I have something that you might like. And, um, and I'm very grateful for the, um, for the, uh, for the gifts. Um, interesting enough, my father was in the textile business, but he didn't live to see me become Aww. a quilter. I, but I guess, you know, sometimes the wishes of the parents come true later on. <laughs> what aspect of the textile industry? Was he selling fabrics or? Yeah, he, um, he sold mostly um, cotton. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What kind of a equipment do you have? Just like one sewing machine? Oh, or, or well, pipes or... no, that um, uh, my art room is um, is filled. Um, I have, of course, a large collection of of, of fabrics, um, and they're all divided by color. I mean, I have, say, a, a whole area, a whole shelf of greens and yellows and so forth and so forth. Um, what else do I have? Um, I have two sewing machines. Um, I sometimes use textile paint. So I have brushes and paints. Um, there are um, oil, there are pastels that I use occasionally. Um, various scissors. Um, I don't know, um, uh, rubber stamps. Um, the room looks very active. <laughs> I like that. Do you print any of your own material? Um, yeah, uh, occasionally, um, well, that's true. I, I like to transform material. Now, the, the, the picture that I'm looking at, um, Genesis 1.12, um, uses textile paint, but I remember I used a lot of stamping there. Huh. And um, yes. Yeah. So I, and, and um, I'm trying to think what else I did there. So in a, in a sense, it was almost like block printing again. Mm -hmm. And I, I brought this one up because first of all, because you, you said you didn't know how, if Judaism influenced mm -hmm. your work and yet oh. I, I see this and um, I also see Book of Life and even Valley of the Leaves, to mm -hmm. me, all feel very much like in Judaism, so. Oh, that's interesting, the Valley of the Leaves. Um, I'm curious to know what makes you think that it, it has a Jewish um, theme or. Um, I guess because I think of it as moving through time and space. Oh, and okay. It feels like a very sp spiritual experience, kind of the continuum that, that you move into a world that is not clearly defined. Yeah, that's a very interesting comment. Um, yeah. But um, just to go back, back to this, and if other people want to jump in, I think um, in, in Genesis, what I noticed, since I have control here, I can point <laughs> uh, some repeating of forms mm -hmm. or yes. very similar repeating. So were these block prints that you made and then stitched over to get them? Yes, um, I, I believe um, that they, I may have had block prints that I, that I actually bought and used. Um, I may have, may have carved something out of an eraser and and printed it 
Um, yes, and then I painted over it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, there's no doubt that, uh, I mean, I am a serious Jew and I do think that um, uh, it has an impact in my art. Mm -hmm. mm. Do you teach at all? Uh, no, a long time ago, I, I did teach art in a public school. Um, and if I <clears throat> were asked to teach quilting, I might do it possibly. Um, <laughs> I have never taught quilting though. It seems like you're very prolific. And so I imagine you need a lot of your time to just do what you're doing. Oh, yes. It does take a lot of time yeah. and, um, um, and a lot of concentration. And of course, you know, I'm I can do it now because you know the children have left the house and mm -hmm. um, and I you know I can concentrate. Um, I noticed uh, that we didn't put dates on any of the labels for the uh, each piece. Oh, what time frame does this cover? I mean, I figure it's up. Okay, to the are you, are we talking about Genesis? Well, talking about oh, the exhibit of Becky. Are, are most of the pieces from the past few years or do they go back? Oh, okay. Um, hmm. They reflect um, a, a fairly long period of time. For example, pop-ups, if I'm not mistaken, I did that at the very end of around 1999 or 1998. That's an old one. Um, and I wanted to uh, include in the show, you know, varied work which reflected um, different time span. Um, so um, in, a, in a way the work, the work in the show is mostly, was mostly done between um, 2005 to 2000, um, and 20, I guess, 2020, yeah. Did you find you were more productive during uh, COVID? I mean, we still have COVID, but have you been- Oh, uh, what? <laughs> that, I was grateful that I had something to concentrate on during that, that awful isolation. And will you share with us what you're working on now? Oh, um, I would I would love to sh actually if if I, I could even show you the w work if you don't mind if that I take a little um, uh, break and, and 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 fetch it. And that would be wonderful. Thank you. Okay, let me I'll sh um because I I would like to share this. Mm. Can you see me? Yes, we're getting a little house tour. Yeah. Can you see this? Oh. Um, can you move in a little closer to it? Hey, um, do you see a round shape? You know, I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute and that yeah. will, should allow you to- Oh, I see. Oh, oh I see the problem. Yes, now you can be bigger if people change their view to speaker and I'll stop talking, so you talk. Let me see whether, uh, can you see it now? It's the, the yes. spine like shapes. Yes. Yeah, so I, talk, I don't know. don't I, see I, it as big. You have to keep talking. So okay. we can all have our view changed to speaker and really see it. Um, can you see it now? We see no. you. You but see you me. To, you yeah. see you, but focus on your, do you, do you work on more than one thing at a time? You have a number of projects going at once? Um, 
you know, I used to be able to do that. Now I, um, I'm just going to go back now because I, 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 I don't have the technique to do this. Um, usually I only work on one piece at a time. Years ago, I could tackle more than one. Um, I like to start something, work on it and complete it. Great. Shoshana, you're muted. The, Sorry? The piece that you're working on now that you just showed us, was there a particular inspiration for that? Yes, well, it, it has a floral theme, but I wanted to do a construction with, um, with an irregular um, edging. Um, and so actually I created three, three of them with different color schemes. And um, when I'm done, the one that I showed you is, is actually done, but there's another one which was lying on the floor and I didn't want to um, <laughs> um, display it yet, but um, that will be, I think it'd be the last one of that idea. And then I'll go on and think of something else. Have you ever had a period where you haven't had inspiration? Oh. Like the writers, we'd call it writer blo writer's block. Oh, absolutely. Have you ever had clickers? And have, yeah, have yes. there are times when I'll finish a project and um, um, at loose ends um, and um, I start to get agitated, but I, I just, I've decided not to, to get upset. It will resolve itself and um, it always does. And, um, and then I will start another piece. But I mean, starting a piece is really challenging. Mm -hmm. Say I mean, more like about anything, that. Yeah, yeah say part. more about that. Yeah. What's hard about it? Well, um, because I guess there's a sense of nervousness. Will it, will it actually work out, you know? Mm -hmm. um, um, Anybody who starts a creative project, I'm sure, is, has certain doubts. Um, but then you just have to plunge in and work. And do you ever have projects that you abandon because they're just not going in the right direction? Um, uh, it rarely happens, but it has. <laughs> yeah, they end up in the garbage can. <laughs> You could make pot holders or something, maybe. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, I don't want to be reminded of my failures. <laughs> so I actually have a question that I could have asked you before. Um, how did you find Becky? Because you came to oh, us right. and we were so we we're just so pleased to have your exhibit. Oh, interesting. Uh, well, um, we. Um, we received the, the uh, Connecticut Jewish Ledger. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. In fact, um, it's the newspaper that my late father-in-law founded. Um, oh. And um, uh, his name was Samuel Neuster. Uh, so um, one day I was reading and I saw an article about an artist exhibiting. So I decided why not try? That's fantastic. Well, yeah, we were so happy to hear from you, but we never, we never asked. You found us, so yeah. Thank you. Yeah. We're pleased to know we have a reputation. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Any other questions or comments? And Suzanne, is there anything else you want to tell us that you feel we haven't asked you about that you'd like to share with us? No, I just think I'm just very pleased to be working in the quilting medium. And I hope that you will um, be able to host other quilters. Um, yeah. And, so um, and, I, and, and I hope you'll be able to enjoy other other shows yes. which feature fiber art. I just had a quick question about the sewing machine aspect of it. My oh. best friend made me this quilt for my retirement. And then I made a quilt for my niece's first child. And it's hard. It's a really, really hard um, to get it through the sewing machine. You know, oh, get... did you piece the pieces on the machine? 
Yeah, we pieced them on the machine. Yep. Yeah. It's just a lot of work. I mean, it took, you know, it's a lot of hours work. and hours and hours to do. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's very labor intensive. Yeah. But it's worth it. <laughs> it was really a beautiful piece. Yeah. And also when a quilt hangs on a wall, it softens the whole interior. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's true. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're going to wrap up unless anybody else has questions or comments. And I want to just share some things that are coming up. But before I do that, I just want to ask again, does anybody have any questions that haven't been answered or comments? Thank you all so much for coming. And thank you, Suzanne, for sharing your work and your words with us. Um, hearing your talk makes the work come to life even more. So, I mean, it was already very vibrant and interesting. And now I, I get a whole other side of it now that I've kind of met you. Um, coming up at Becky, I just want to mention a couple of things. Next Wednesday, uh, Rabbi Woodward is going to be doing a talk back at the JCC. I have to find my notes about what I don't even know what it's about. Um, it's the cultural conflict at the JCC Beckerman Cultural Arts Series. He will discuss how does this type of conflict affect those living it? Is lasting peace possible? What steps should and can be taken to alleviate conflict? And it's part of this ongoing series. It's next Wednesday at 7.30. You have to register and you can do that online. And, and Shoshana, Shoshana just yes. interrupt. Um, that's May 25th, which May 20th. is two weeks out. Two weeks, I'm sorry, you're right. Next week is, um, I'm looking in the wrong month here. That's part of our problem. Next week is the Kumsitz. Yes, I was getting ahead of myself. So next Wednesday is the Kumsitz in the Becky Courtyard singing and um, yeah, singing and gathering at Becky. And that starts at 8 p.m. Uh, outside. Um, and then just to give you a heads up coming up next month, June 1st and June 8th, we're doing something a little different. We have CJ May's sister is a film director and she is, we're gonna screen her film at Becky or you can do it yourself um, online. It, it's called I'll Find You. It's a movie about musicians, young musicians who meet in Europe and vow to perform together at Carnegie Hall, but historic events intervene and they get separated. Um, so, and I've seen the trailer, it looks really interesting. And then the following week, she will be coming to speak and I can't remember her name. Do you remember it, Rachel? It's, um, Ugh. Hang on. She's a real like Hollywood director. She's done a bunch of movies. Um, I, I, yeah, I'll find it. Needless to say, it will be in the Becky bulletin. It's all, yeah, it will be. And, um, Yes, and it's out, it'll be going out on the mid-month mailer and all of that stuff. Yeah. Um, all right, I can't find her name. But anyway, it'll all come, you'll see it all. And I'm just urging people to think about coming to the actual screening because I think it would be fun. I haven't been to a movie theater in two and a half years. I think it'll be fun to be together in the Becky basement with our great sound system and screen and all that and, and have a, a real communal screening experience if COVID allows, and if not, we'll all stream it at home. But, and then to have the opportunity on Zoom to talk to the filmmaker. So, oh, her name is Martha Coolidge. Martha Coolidge is the director and the film's called I'll Find You. So again, thank you everyone. Thank you, Cynthia, thank you again for your, all your work with the photographs and, and Helen, thank you and Diane. And um, I appreciate everything that everybody's done tonight. And Suzanne, again, it was really nice to meet you. And uh, maybe we'll meet again, who knows? 